Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I uh, love Tuesdays because I have a astro flipping coaching call every Tuesday that starts at 5 p.m. And it is amazing. We go five, six hours sometimes. And uh, we just do a live Q&A. We chit chat. We discuss whatever deals people are working on or whatever struggles people are having. It's always an incredible time, always super fun. And I host those myself. Wouldn't you guys like to be on a six-hour call with the entire Astro community? Sure you would. But you can't if you're not an Astro. Sorry. Jacob, how are you, bro? I am doing good. How are you doing, Jamil? I'm magical, dude. It's so great to see you. Guys, if you don't already know Jacob Simpson, he is... uh incredible human being been with the astro community for a long time one of our og superstars and he he's so busy that he's been building his business doing work he's given i'd say how, how many how many hundreds of thousands of dollars in assignments have you have you paid out to other wholesalers um, I think we've helped other wholesalers make around 1.3 million, 1.3 million dollars. And would you say that you made the other half of that, or would you have made um, about so same? I or... think we're right around like 500,000 in assignment fees. Insane, insane. Jacob, how did you find Astro? By the way, honestly, it was kind of a a, a weird journey. Um, so I got started in traditional wholesaling. So you know, I joined other courses and I was doing direct to seller with cold calling. I bounced between like um, SMS to homeowners, mailers, SEO, Facebook ads, all of this. Um, long story short, I ended up working with another wholesaler and they told me most of their deals were coming from other wholesalers as well. So I came across one of your ads. It was the one where you were like shivering and you're like, are you tired of cold calling? And I'm like, man, I've been cold calling for you know, a hundred thousand cold calls. I'm very tired of cold calling. Um, and then from that point, uh, I called the rep and he was like, Hey man, we're going to teach you how to work with real estate agents and other wholesalers. And that's exactly what I was trying to figure out. And so I, you know, jumped on board. Amazing. And how's life been since? Uh, so I did three deals in two years prior to joining Astro and I've done about 45 or so deals now. Amazing, bro. Oh, and how, how valuable is this community? Just, you know, not as a self-promo, but for self-promo. <laughs> there you go. Um, fantastic. I mean, I definitely, um, you know, wouldn't tell anyone else to join any other group. I've probably joined seven, eight different mentorships. One, the course alone goes more in depth than any other course I've taken. And two, the community, um, you know, even if you already know everything about wholesaling, I would pay just to have access to the community because there are so many rock stars who are willing to help you grow your business from every level. I mean, I know people in Astro who are doing one deal a month to people who are doing 40, 50 deals a month. So you have help from literally all aspects of it. And people are also bringing mindset help. Um, so yeah, it's an incredible community, incredible course. Um, it's, it's been great for me. I, uh, I I love you, bro, and and you've been great for it. The Astro community is not me, guys. The Astro community is the people. I am a I am one in many. That's what this thing is about. It's not about one person. It's not about a leader and then everybody doing what the person says. It has nothing to do with that. This is a community that is led by its by its members. And its members take responsibility for one another. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine feeling like that where everybody is linked? Everybody is connected. And it just so happens that on a global level, guys, that's what we're all living in as well. We just don't always understand and realize that we can pull any opportunity to ourselves through the intentions we set, through the energy that we reflect out into the world and uh, this is a part of what we really dive into in the community as well. I sometimes call it the greatest bait and switch in the history of info, where I pretend I'm going to just teach you about real estate, but truly what's going to happen is we're going to transform as human beings together. 
That, my friends, is what we do. Now, day two of this challenge is going to be just insane. Jacob, I don't want to take a lot of his time away because he's so knowledgeable and he's got so much to share with you guys. And so I want to give him the opportunity of a clear runway. But before we begin, like we would any other time, guys, we're going to begin this call with a prayer. And again, the reason for that, it is my belief that anything and everything we want or need in our life can find its way to us through our source if we ask for it and take a step towards it. Now, again, if this makes you uncomfortable, no problem. Go ahead and mute me for the next 30 seconds because we'll do it anyways. But if you'd like to join us, here we go. Father God, we love you so much, Lord. Thank you for today. Thank you for opening all our eyes and giving us breath, for giving us the minds to connect and communicate with each other. Lord, we are so grateful for that. God, we pray that you guide each of us to your purpose for our lives so that the steps we take are your steps, the words we speak, your words, the actions we take, your actions. Lord, we pray that you guide us to those individuals that will be of benefit to us, either through a financial gain or a lesson we need to learn. And we ask that you deflect us from those individuals that will waste our time or bring us harm. Lord, for any of our family members in attendance here today that are in need of any additional understanding of the concepts that Jacob will teach today, Lord, we just pray for perfect clarity in their minds. And for any of us suffering through any physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual pain, Lord, we pray for perfect healing in our lives. And Lord, it is with humble hearts and in your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Uh, IG, sorry, it is not on my on my YouTube. This is on um, the Zoom. There's a Zoom link. Bobby, where's the Zoom link, bro? It's in your bio. In my bio. So if you guys are wondering where, how the hell you can join, I apologize. I told you to go to my YouTube. It's not my YouTube. It's in the link is in my bio. You guys can join this. It's going to be great. Uh, it's not YouTube. IG. It is in the link is in my bio. It is a Zoom link. Come on and join day two of this incredible challenge where we've got. Jacob Simpson, superstar extraordinaire of Astro Flipping. What are we going to talk about today, bro? Man, it's going to be value packed. Um, so for like the first hour or so, we sent out text messages. So I'll show everyone how you go about getting a list of realtors, how you upload them in a batch and what my templates look like. We'll call some realtors, get them on the phone so you can see what agent outreach looks like. And then for like the last ha hour, uh, half hour or so, um, we'll actually go on to Zillow and look at outdated properties on the MLS, and then we'll give those agents a call as well. So that way you can so, see what agent outreach looks like and MLS outreach looks like. Incredible. And you are one of the greatest that does it, Jacob. We appreciate you. We love you. Uh, I personally appreciate you and love you very much. You thank are you, a friend. Love you you are a colleague, and you're going to crush this today. Jacob, the stage is yours. I appreciate you, my friend. What's going on, everyone? Um, so my name is Jacob Simpson. I hope everyone is ready today for um, some value. So again, like I said, I'm going to go over what agent outreach looks like, um, and then I'll go over what MLS outreach looks like. So ideally, what you can do is set up a text campaign with your agent outreach, send about 50 to 100 text messages a day out. So you're talking to roughly 25, 50 people every single day. And then you can also hit the MLS and get in two to five offers if you have the time to do that. Um, so a few things I do want to share. Uh, so today I'm going to be hitting the St. Petersburg, Tampa market. Um, I just recently tapped into that market a couple months ago. So that is my secondary market. My primary market is going to be DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So if you're in either of those markets, definitely reach out and I'm happy to help you. Um, I did want to share a few things prior to getting started. Um, so when it comes to actually, like if I were to look back and, and, and try to figure out a game plan of what I would do to get started in wholesaling, the first step would be connecting with 10 to 20 solid buyers or five to 10 solid disposition players. Now these can be Keegley, these can be Astro students, they can be any big players in your market. Um, and then you can find tax record buyers. Uh, you can go on Facebook and find buyers. There's so many places where you can find buyers and dispo wholesalers, but I would try to connect with 10, five to 10 disposition wholesalers and about 10 to 20 solid buyers. Now, the reason I say do this prior to jumping in and doing outreach is because 
this allows us to figure out exactly where our buyers are buying at and what they're looking for. So if we know that most buyers are buying between two and 500,000 in St. Petersburg and certain zip codes, then we can focus our energy on those areas versus going after million dollar properties, um, you know, in a neighborhood in Tampa that's not really doing flips, right? Um, so once we've connected with a lot of those solid disposition players, some of the stuff you'll want to gather, in my opinion, would be the title company they're using. So that way, when it comes to sign a contract, you already know what title company to put on the contract. Ask them where their buyers are buying at, what price point their buyers are buying at, um, and then ask if they're willing to help you lock up deals if you come across solid deals, if they're willing to walk you through how to you know, sign a contract and all that good stuff. Again, the name of the game is relationships over revenue. So we really want to pay attention to building the relationships that we have. And this is going to help us. So that way we can loop other people into deals if they get a little bit messy or if you're feeling uncomfortable. Once you've gathered all that information and you've connected with some solid players, it's then time to hit the MLS or do agent outreach. Then you find your deal, you loop in that dispositions player to help you, or if you're confident enough and comfortable enough to go ahead and lock it up yourself, you get it locked up. And then you send it to your dispositions people, they'll help you dispo it, or you reach out to your buyers, send them, send them the deal. Um, and then if you don't get it locked up, just follow up, follow up, follow up. And then a few tips that I wanna share prior to getting started would be learn through experience. So how I look at it is when you get involved in a nine to five job and you go through training, nine times out of 10, that training just gives you a basis or an understanding of what you're gonna do. But when you actually get into the job, you're like, all right, what the hell did I just learn? So learn through experience, get enough to be comfortable and then just jump in and start learning. Chances are you're going to make mistakes in the beginning. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We're all going to sound dumb at some point. Just push through that. Don't be afraid to fail. Again, as long as you're learning, you're not failing. Um, don't compare yourself with others on social media. So I see a lot of people, you know, yes, we can get deals in two weeks or 30 days. Realistically, we're probably going to take three to six months to get our first deal. And that's because it's going to take time to actually learn what's going on. So be comfortable failing, learn from those failures, and just understand that your journey is your journey and no one else's, right? Join a mentorship, um, avoid shiny object syndrome. So again, don't go bouncing around between a lot of different marketing methods really stay focused, pick one to two marketing methods and one to two markets, ideally one in one, and then just give it three to six months of your full 110% effort. If you do that, it's going to be hard not to see a deal or at least tremendous growth on your end, right? And then lastly, don't throw out all your negotiation points at one time. So I see a lot of people just jump out of the gate and throw everything they can keep, hold some back and, and we'll get into this a little bit. Um, so now that I've kind of gone through those tips and I have this, everyone can take a screenshot of this if they want to. Um, now we have to actually find a realtor's list, right? And so how I do that is I go to realtor.com and you can go to find realtors and you can put in your market and you can see all of the realtors phone numbers right here, or you can go to Zillow and you can type in, you know, Tampa, whoops. You could go Tampa, Florida for sale. And then any one of these are going to have agents name and phone number. So you can take this information and build out a list. So what I ended up doing was building out a giant list of properties. And then I had, so I had the address. I took the agent's name and I took the phone number. And once I had about, you know, 100 to 200 addresses, then I put that into batch leads. So once you do that, what that looks like is you'll come over here into campaigns, you'll create your SMS campaign. And then once you create your SMS campaign, you'll go over into lists and then you want to upload your list. So What's important here is when you upload your list, you'll do bulk imports, you'll put your list in there. 
um, and I, I don't have a list right now in front of me, but there's a section where you do manually update. And so what that allows you to do is actually put in the agent's name and like first name and last name as the actual contact we're reaching out to instead of having Batch pull the homeowner's first name and last name. And the reason we want to do this is because when we're doing outreach, we want it to be texting the agent, not the homeowner. So if the homeowner's John and the agent is Barbara, we don't want it to say, hey, John, can you help me out with a purchase? We want it to say, hey, Barbara, can you help me out with a purchase? So you want to make sure that you have that manual manual upload selected so that you can put the agent's name for the homeowner's name instead of the actual homeowner. Real quick, Jacob, I, I noticed yesterday out of all 408 people who showed up, six of you decided that you trusted yourself enough to download a tool that's actually going to help you do this business. So guys, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. This batch batch leads is an incredible opportunity for you to maximize your reach, maximize your communication. Please don't sleep on it. All right. Batchleads.io slash Jamil. It's in the chat. Sorry. In the chat. Go ahead. Make sure you sign up. So once you upload your list and you got your campaign, you'll go into your campaign and then you hit resume. Now we've already sent a whole bunch, but what it basically looks like is it gives you the address. Again, this is the address where I got the listing information from. So this isn't, they don't own this property. And then I have the agent's name right here and the templates that we're sending out. And let me give you a quick little snippet of what the templates look like. Um, so the SMS templates that I'm using basically say, Hey, Tom, it's Jacob. I came across your info on the MLS. Can you help me with a purchase by chance? Hey, Tom, it's Jacob. Can you help me with a purchase? So these are the 10 templates that I use. And then this is the backup one in case it doesn't go through. It just says, good morning, it's Jacob. Can you help me find my next house? So when you go through the campaign and you hit send, it's going to filter through or it's going to um, rotate through all of these text messages and allow you to send them. So again, when we go back to campaign and you hit resume, all you have to do is just keep hitting send. And like, if I hit send right here, it sends it. And then it changes the message for me automatically. Now we've already sent out 300. So you can see it's 66% through. If we come over here to inbox, it's going to show us all of the people who have replied. So we just sent out probably 300 in the last 20 minutes. And you can see we have a lot of people that we got to reply to. So we might not even have to send out that many in a row. I probably get about a 50 to 70% response rate with this text message. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and just start some, calling some people. So this is the number that we're calling and this is Dave. So we're going to call Dave and see if he can help us out. This is Dave. Hey, Dave, this is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? Good thing. I was giving you a call. Um, I had sent you a text a little while ago off of my uh, marketing message, um, but I just wanted to touch base. I saw you were a real estate agent and wanted to see if you could help me out by chance. Uh, where are you? What, what, what story? Sure. Yeah. So I'm actually up in DC, but I do a lot of my like fix and flips and stuff like that down in the St. Petersburg, Tampa area. And yeah. I saw that you were an agent down there, and I just wanted to touch base and see if you had any potential flips or, you know, buy and holds that I could take a look at. I don't really like it. I've had so many offers to investors or, you know, flooding me with offers that I just call low balls, and I can't, there's just no way to make anything work. So I don't know that there's anything I could do for it. Okay. I mean, are they, are they like outdated properties or are they fully renovated? Uh, they're not updated. No, they, they're in, um, one is average. The other one is average. Okay. Well, Hey, I mean, you know, just because it doesn't work for the other investors doesn't necessarily mean it won't work for me. I mean, we have multiple exit strategies, whether it's a fix and flip, you know, long-term rental, short-term rental, 
Um, we even work with some hedge funds where, you know, we might be able to offload it to them. Um, so, you know, I definitely would love to take a look at it. Would you be able to either text me over the addresses or even email me so I can look into them? Sweet. Sounds good. Yeah. It's, if you want to send them over to this number, I'll take a look. Um, and then either way, uh, I'll, I'll submit an offer with my POF and, you know, if we can make something work on one of these two, great. If not, you know, we're, we're always looking. So, so, you know, sounds good, Dave. I appreciate it. And hopefully we can make this one happen and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Look at that, guys. Literally the first call. The first call, possibly one or two deals that he's going to send us. It's that easy, everyone. So, you know, he's going to text me over the addresses. We'll take a look at it. Let's go ahead and do hot lead and then move on to the next one. Hey, Jacob, can you try holding the phone a little closer to the mic? Yeah. Cool, cool. Thank you. Could you hear it for the most part? I don't know why it was it was in and out again. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Let me see. Hi, this is Tony Cultural. Uh, please give me a call back. Missed your call. Thanks. Bye. Could you hear her voicemail? Yeah, that was better. Okay, cool. And then he just texted me the addresses. Um, so let me go ahead and call some people and then we'll look into that and uh, see if we can make an offer. Let me call it Ann. Beaches. This is Ann. Hey, Ann. This is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? Hey, Jacob. I'm doing great. How can I help you? Yeah, I was reaching out. Um, I had just sent you a text message off of my 727 number. It's my work number. Um, but I figured it was easier to give you a call. I just wanted to touch base and see if you might be able to help me with a, a purchase. Absolutely, Jacob. How can I help? Awesome. So I'm actually an investor in the area and we're doing on uh, roughly about two to four flips a month. And we do take down some buy and holds as well. And I just wanted okay. to touch base with you and see if you maybe had any, um, you or your team had any outdated properties that I could take a look at for either a potential flip or possible hold. Um, I might have one, Jacob. I'm not sure. I am waiting for the seller to get back to me. So is this a good number for you, Jacob? Yep, the 571 number is the best one to get me at. Okay, give me, um, well, this uh, seller is not even in the country. Uh, give me like two or two days, maybe three days, and I will get back to you once I have talked to him about the number. Okay, perfect. And can you just kind of give me a um, a quick rundown of the property? Is it is it like outdated in a potential flip or what are you thinking? Um, it's completely outdated, but it's in okay shape. Two bedroom, two bus, um, nice size yard. Um, but it really it it really needs a remodel. And right my now, my favorite kind of house. Yes, yeah. What, it, what part of, uh, is it in St. Petersburg? Yes, it's in St. Petersburg on the uh, southeast side of St. Pete, uh, like maybe six or seven minutes from downtown. Okay. So it, it's a, a really good location. 
Um, but yeah. like I said, I can't really say more. The, the house had two little pro two problems. Um, the roof had a leak, but it was recently fixed, okay. and I have the um, uh, the invoice for it, so it was done. And then it had a settlement problem, and that was fixed a couple of months ago, and I also have the invoice for it. But other than that, the house is okay, but just totally outdated. Okay, perfect. Well, hey, the more problems, the better, um, and the more outdated, the better for me. So I will touch base with you in two to three days and see if you've talked with the homeowner. And if you hear from them prior, um, definitely feel free to reach out. And, you know, I'd love to I, take a look I at it just, and make an offer. I just put a star to your number. There we go. I like to hear that. I appreciate okay. you, on. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye. All right. Could everyone hear that? Yeah, that was amazing, Jacob. Okay, cool. Look, hey, let me just point this out. Two calls, two calls and already three leads. First person just sent me two and this person has one. Like this just goes to show how easy it really is. Just jump on the phones. If you sound dumb, who cares? You can tell people it's your first time making a call and they'll be happy to help you. It's been like 10 minutes. Literally, we've only made two calls. So good. So good. All right. So then we mark them as a hot lead. So if we come over here, we can see all the hot leads that we have today. And then we just move on to the next one. And if my camera cuts out, I'll just switch over to my other camera. But just to let everyone know if, if it does cut out, that's why. Hello. Hey, Monica. Yes. Hey, this is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? Hi, thank you. How are you? I am doing pretty good. I just sent you a text message off my 727 number, but I figured it was easier to give you a call. Yes. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to touch base. I came across your info on the MLS. Um, so I'm actually a real estate agent in the, or excuse me, a real estate investor in the area. And okay. on average, I'm doing about, you know, two to four flips a month. And sometimes we take down some buy and holds as well. Uh, but okay. I just wanted to touch base and see if you maybe had anything outdated that could be a good potential flip or a potential hold for me by chance. Um, not currently in the moment. Uh, we've picked one up for myself, which was involved in a fire damage. Okay. Um, but uh, I will be reaching out to a couple of other ones that I see just because that in the holiday area, there's a lot of old homes mm -hmm. that do need fixing. Uh, so I think either before the holiday or after the holiday, I'm going to be reaching out to those. Okay, sweet. No, definitely keep me posted. Now, are you, um, I know you said you picked one up for yourself. Are you pretty active in the uh, like fix and flipping industry or you, was that just kind of a one-off thing? We just do like maybe like two or three a year. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. I was just curious because sometimes we don't necessarily take down all of the properties we come across. We do wholesale here and there. Um, uh -huh. So if you were, you know, actively buying, I could definitely send some deals your way as well. But if you're only doing one off things, then I don't want to overwhelm you. No, you, you could send, I mean, how, how do you send it through emails? Um, so typically we either blast it out through emails or we'll send over a text and the deal text typically just has like the address, the bed and bath count, square footage, year build, um, construction type, and then some pictures and what we're asking for it. Okay. And you could definitely add me in into that. That'd be great. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll definitely make sure to send it over. And if you ever have anything that your clients might be interested in that you're not, or excuse me, if we send anything that you think your clients might be interested in and, and you're not necessarily interested in, we're definitely happy to work together. Wonderful. righty. Perfect. Thank you. No problem, Monica. You have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll go ahead and do a warm lead. Um, I don't know if if I would necessarily consider that a solid lead. I would say maybe send her some deals, see if she picks anything up. Um, she might have some clients who are interested, especially if she's willing to take on a fire damage property. Those typically aren't the easiest deals to take down. Um, she might be a good you know resource to have in that regards. Um, 
but yeah, still follow up with her in a week or so and see if she's got anything. Or excuse me, after the holidays, maybe because she said she was going to call after the holidays. Hi, you've reached the voicemail box from Morgan Ellis. All right, I'm going to give him one more call back. All right, and we also have 330 or 73 people in here. So if you guys are getting value, if you guys and girls are getting value, make sure you hit some fire emojis, some heart emojis. Let's get this interactive. Let me see. Let me try calling this guy one more time. Okay, okay, I see all the hearts coming in. And I'm double calling him, by the way. Don't be afraid to double or triple call some of these agents. Hi, you've reached the voicemail box from Morgan Ellis for the Better Life Realty. I'm sorry I'm not able to come to the phone right now. Please leave your number and a brief message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. For a quicker response, please contact me at 727-455-8565. Oh, we're going to send you a voicemail and a text Thanks and have a blessed day. Hey, Morgan, this is Jacob. I was uh, just giving you a call. I, I just sent you a text message off my 727 number, but it's my marketing number. So I just wanted to jump on the phone with you. Um, I just wanted to touch base and see if you could help me with a purchase by chance. If you could give me a call back, my number is 571-238-7359. Again, that's 571-238-7359. Thanks, Morgan. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right, and then we're just gonna text him. Hey, Morgan, just tried calling you off my personal cell. This is my marketing number. There we go. So I'm saying, hey, Morgan, just tried calling you off my personal cell. This is my marketing number. Call me when you get a chance. 571-238-7359. And then we move on to the next one. Hello, you've reached Callie. All right. So ideally, what you want to have is you want to you want to give them a call back within like a minute or two of them texting. So ideally, you would you would have um, you know you would probably send out a batch of like ten or fifteen respond, ten or fifteen respond, because right now they're probably like eh, I don't know. I got this text at nine fifty five. They're already not thinking about it, right? So we definitely want to try to get them um, as soon as they reply, if, if possible. Good afternoon. This is Tally. Hey, Tally. This is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? 
I'm great, Jacob. How are you? I am doing pretty good. I just sent you a text off my 727 number, but unfortunately I can't call. So I just wanted to jump on the phone with you and give you a call. Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm actually an investor in the St. Petersburg, Tampa area. And okay. I came across your info on the MLS and I just wanted to see if you maybe had or your team had any outdated properties that I could look at for my next fix and flip or potential hold by chance. I think you send us an email as well. Am I, am I thinking correct? Do you send an email blast? No, that definitely would not. No, be. you don't. <laughs> no, okay. Okay. Um, I don't at the moment have any fix and flip type properties. Definitely willing to keep your phone number. We do come across them. Okay. Perfect. You know, I know that it's a tough market um, right now for those, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's, it's weird because it's, there's a lot of them out there, but the homeowners are still kind of, you know, some of them are still unrealistic on their numbers. And so, you know, they're not really ready to accept that the market's shifting, but, you know, the opportunities are definitely becoming more plentiful, if that makes sense. I think so. I think so. I think that the market is relaxing. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, definitely. Um, I will absolutely, Jacob, what's your last name? It's Simpson, like the TV show. Jacob, what's your email? Jacob at consistent homebuyers.com and I'll go ahead and text you all my info as well just so you have that on, on hand what do you look for when you're looking for them are you looking for two ones that you can convert to three twos are you looking for three twos or what are you looking for yeah so we don't really have like um, a strong preference in that regards pretty much the worse condition the better um, we definitely will convert um, you know we have let me pull up and see where some of our deals are right now um, but you know we've had some in Hudson um, I got I have one under contract right now in Pinellas County um, so kind of all over I would say our sweet spot is going to be purchase price between like 200 and 400,000 and then um you know if we need to convert we can definitely convert but I would say um typically we're looking for block homes we will look at some frame style homes but they're a little bit more of a pain in the ass um right so yeah typically you're going to be block style homes um no real preference in regards to bed and bath and then sweet spot purchase price around two to 400. And then what are you looking for on the, like, let's say it's 300,000. Let's say you purchased it for 300,000. What are you looking at for? Yeah. So the one we're looking at, um, it's pretty nice. So this one, we have an ARV of about 420. Um, so I would say probably we're going to be right in the range of about 50 to 60% of the ARV with our purchase price. Okay. How do you normally find them? Um, so right now we work with a lot of wholesalers and then we just started connecting with a lot of real estate agents just because, you know, sometimes wholesaler deals can get a little bit messy. Um, mm -hmm. So we found that working with agents has been pretty, pretty um, valuable for us right now. So that's kind of where we're pivoting towards. So you've just got agents kind of boots on the ground. Hey, if, if you see one that fits this criteria, give me a call. Yeah. And then a lot of times, um, because we do scrub the MLS pretty heavily, we're, you know, asking if they're direct to the seller or they know of the property themselves. Because what we don't want to have happen is like, for instance, I don't want you to go scrub the MLS and send me a bunch of deals that you see. And then I've already right. seen them. And, and then you essentially right. just waste your time. Right. Understood. Yep. Yep. And that's why I asked, like, how many, do you have a bunch of realtors out there? Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to keep your name and you're going to text me all your information, right? Yep. I'll go ahead and send you over my contact info um, and then my email as well. So that way you have everything. Only looking for fix and flips. This is not buy and hold, right? You're not looking to rent. It's just cash or hard money what are you doing there um so we will look at some buy and holds um it really is going to be yeah yeah we'll take a look at some we have some long-term rentals and some short-term um okay. with the market right now we are just trying to be a quick in and out so mainly looking for flips um okay. and in, in regards to financing we're typically going to be using cash um, sometimes we will leverage private money or hard money but in any case we're still going to be using it as cash. So there's not going to be an appraisal uh, contingency or anything like that associated with the hard money. Right. Okay. 
Fabulous. I'm glad you reached out to me today. I'm definitely going to put you on my database. I will definitely keep it in mind. Um, if we come across a new, I don't have any now. I know that for sure all of mine are done. And then the, all the ones that we have coming up are, you know, would go to an end user. Um, however, it's great to have your contact information because we do come across them. Sounds good. I'll definitely be on the lookout and, um, you know, I'm, I'm fairly active in the, in the market. So, you know, no matter what happens, you know, we might be buying a little bit deeper, but we're always going to be buying. Sounds great. Jacob, enjoy the rest of your day. You too, Tally. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So I would say that's more of a warm lead. Um, uh, whoops. I don't know where her conversation just went, but I should have hit warm lead. So I'm going to go ahead and text her my information. And then if she has anything that comes available, she's going to go ahead and send it to me. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll set her on a monthly follow-up. So then we'll just touch base with her once a month. You know, hey, Tally, hope everything's been well. Do you have anything that I can take a look at? Or, hey, has anything popped up? Um, you know, maybe even two weeks because she said she does come across them. So let me go ahead and text her my contact information real quick so she has it. Is, is this valuable for everyone? If so, leave some hearts, do something. Let me make sure everyone's engaged and getting some value. Jacob, that was a great connect. And we got a question in the chat that I want to bring up at the moment because I feel like it's pretty relevant. By um, way. Somebody asked, so is Jacob going to assign any of these contracts to an end buyer or is he planning to flip them? I haven't heard him mention that he would be looking to possibly assign to another investor. So when do you go about that? Yeah, so I go at this as a actual investor, right? Because at the end of the day, we don't know our, our exit strategy. And I'm not saying to go in this and be deceitful. I'm not saying to mislead someone. But at the end of the day, if you connected with 20 solid buyers and 10 solid dispositions people, you don't know what your end strategy is. Maybe you guys are talking and you figure out that you want to take this down yourself. Maybe you and you, your buyer partner up together. So truly going into this, I don't know if I'm buying this myself. I don't know if it's going to be a rental. I don't know if I'm going to wholesale this. And at the end of the day, it's none of the agent's business. This is my deal. Here's my offer. If you like it, the seller will accept. If not, we'll move forward. So I personally would not tell the agent that I'm wholesaling it uh, because that leads to further questioning and possibly losing the deal. Now, if they ask me straight up, are you planning on wholesaling this? I'll simply say, at the end of the day, I'm not 100% sure what my exit strategy is. Ideally, I'm taking this down myself to flip, but I do wholesale some properties, so we might assign this one as well. But again, I'm looking at this primarily as a flip for myself. So I would definitely say, if you're planning on doing that, partner up with some buyers, partner up with some dispo wholesalers, so now you truly have multiple exit strategies. Because again, if you come across a deal that's 200,000 and you can put in 100,000 or 50,000 and walk away with 600,000 and you have a buyer you're close with and that buyer's willing to partner up with you, well, now you're buying a house, right? Because that deal is too good not to take down. So I would look at this more in the standpoint and perspective of you're an actual investor and wholesaling is just an exit strategy to what you're doing right? So I'm not going to go out and mention that I'm wholesaling. So we're just going to, we're just going to jump in. So hopefully that answered your question. That was a beautiful answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's call Scarlett. Your call has been forwarded to an Man. 
Her call has been forwarded to it. Always hit that double call. Her call has been forwarded. All right. Clarence. And then ideally, I would have sent uh, Scarlett the text message as well, but I didn't. Hello, this is Claire. All right, someone's got to answer. Hello, this is Claire. So, half and back and associate. All right, let's go to Felix. Let's see what Felix is going to say. Hey, listen, Felix, I thought we were a good match until you didn't answer. I just feel Felix Bud for his port now. Felix, we're not a match. We're swiping whichever way on you, bud. All right. I know for a fact Rick Lambert's about to answer. You can't have a name like that and not be serious. Hello. Hey, Rick. Hello. Hey, Rick, this is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Hold on. Hello. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. Hi, Rick, this is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I just had sent you a text off my 727 number, but it's not letting me call for some reason, so I called you off my personal cell. Okay. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to touch base. I actually got your information off of Realtor.com, and I just wanted to see. Um, so I'm actually an investor in the St. Petersburg area. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just wanted to see if maybe you had any like outdated properties um, that I could possibly make an offer on for a potential flip or even buy and hold. No, I, I don't have anything right now like that. Okay. Do you ever come across outdated properties or do you mainly only focus on like fully updated ones? No, I mean, I come across them once in a while, um, but uh, you know, and I can keep you in mind if I do. Okay. Uh, so I'll keep your number. And if I do, then I'll give you a call. 
Sounds good. Yeah, I'm actively okay. looking. What we buy about two to four houses a month. So if you come across anything that might be a nightmare listing, hoarder house, mm -hmm. or just generally outdated, you know, feel free to pass it along. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem, Rick. Have a good one. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Bye. All right. That was weird. I wasn't feeling Rick. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was interesting. <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh -huh, mm -hmm, yep, yep. Okay. Is that market? Um, we'll do, I don't know if this, I can't tell if it just marked it or not. So we're just going to the next one. Dana. Hey, Dana. This is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. How are you, Jacob? I'm doing pretty good. I just wanted to touch base with you. Um, I just sent you a text message off my 727 yeah. number. Um, but I'm actually an investor in the St. Petersburg, Tampa area, and I came across your info <clears throat> on the MLS and just wanted to see if maybe you or your team had any outdated properties that I could take a look at that could be, you know, a potential flip or hold. Well, one right now, I do mostly um, waterfront, but I have one, and I don't have a team. It's just me. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I um, am waiting on, I didn't even, I didn't list it. It was an investor like you, but it's a um, over 55 okay. community in a condo. And so they're in there and they're looking at it right now and deciding if they're going to be able to go through or not. So if they, I could always call you if that falls through and give you why okay and you said it was a condo yeah it's a one bedroom one bath over 55 gold court okay um so i probably won't be the best buyer in that regards because i i typically stay away from condos just because of like the hoa fees and condo fees that are involved well you're going up too yeah but not, yeah but they are going up <laughs> yeah exactly so um if you come across any like outdated you know property or houses that are like nightmare listings hoarder houses just genuinely outdated i'll definitely take a look at it we don't have you know we're not too picky we'll even look at some multifamily up to like four to five units but condos are probably one of the only thing that we really don't go after do you do um we do high ends yeah, of course. So I actually live up in DC. So most of the properties that we buy up here are going to be, you know, upwards of the ARV of like a million dollars. So, you know, that's our sweet spot up here. Down there, it's going to be two to 400. But if we come across anything okay. that. One point nine million that she would, she would fold on, but it, it, it's, it, it's not like a complete God or anything it's just a little outdated okay what do you think after we you know fix it up what do you think it would go for oh you can get north of i mean definitely in the two five range okay she wanted two five before fixing it up <laughs> i got gotcha. you um go, yeah feel free to send it over and i'll take a look um you know, we definitely have the funds to be able to move forward on it if the numbers make sense. But I'll tell you, if we're talking 2.5 and then 1.9 asking, it's probably, you know. She'll go down. Okay, cool. Yeah, send it over. Um, one seven range. Okay, yeah. I mean, I'd be happy to take a look at it and see if it's something we can make a move on. Okay, I'll send you the address. Right now, I'm tied up, but um, where I can't get to uh, I've I've got, I'm hurrying on something, but when I'm finished, I'll send it to you. Perfect. Sounds good. I'll be on the lookout. Okay, cool. This is my cell phone, so I'll also text you my contact info, and then, um, yeah, whenever okay. you get the chance, chance, feel free to send it over. Awesome. Thank you. No problem, Dana. Have a good one. You too. Bye. There's another lead. <clears throat> and I just want to point out, I mean, I don't know if I'm sounding decent on the phones. I had COVID like two days ago, so I a little bit foggy headed, but you know, at the end of the day, again, you don't have to sound like a rock star or an expert to get on the phone with people. Yeah. And I just want to remind people, you can squad up with Jacob and send him deals in St. P or DMV, pull your realtor list, upload it into batch and send him deals. I just put his contact info in the chat. Batch link is in the chat. Get after it today, guys. 
send me your deals. I'm happy to help um, you lock up deals. I'm happy to help you like review contracts, give you buy numbers, give you sell numbers, all that good stuff. The only thing that I ask is that you actually give it a shot yourself. So do not send me a list of 50 properties and say, let me know where I need to be at on all of these ones or if they're a deal. What I want you to do and what you need to do is if you come across a property, gather information on it, try to figure out your numbers yourself, and then connect with me and say, hey, can you just double check what I'm doing? Make sure everything looks good. So at the end of the day, you're not becoming reliant on me. You're using me kind of as a sounding board, right? So that if anything ever happens, God forbid to me, right? You can still operate in your business. So that's all I ask is if you want to work with me, just, you know, attempt to do it yourself as well. So that way you're building a sufficient business and you can rely on yourself eventually. Very well said. And then how many more calls should I do until we jump over to MLS, you think? Uh, maybe like one or two. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and give Maria a call. And you guys can hear my mic and everything? Yeah, you sound great. Perfect. Call has been forwarded. Call has been forwarded to an automatic. So let me call you back real quick. So she's going to reach out whenever. And then Tally, she was a warm lead. Um, we'll call Becky. But you all can see how, like, how many responses we're getting off of these. Hi, this is Becky. I also want to say, guys, in batch leads, Jacob can simply click on the number and dial right there on his computer. We just can't do that because of Zoom. It canceled each other out, but it's that easy. I just want to yeah. let you guys know that. Yeah, so you can just click right here. Um, Okay, one of them just sent me the address. So you can just click right here and then it will say like allow um, and then you can call. All right, we're going to try calling Richard and then if he doesn't answer, we'll jump over. Well, even if he does answer, we'll jump over to MLS after this. All righty, let's go. Kyle speaking to help you. Hey, Rich, this is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, what can I do for you? Yeah, so I actually just came across your info on the uh, MLS, and I'm an investor in the St. Petersburg area. Correct. Yeah, and I just wanted to see if maybe you or your team had any outdated properties um, that I could take a look at for a potential fix and flip or buy and hold. Unfortunately, not at the moment, Jacob. No problem. Do you, uh, do you ever come across them, or are you uh, mainly only looking at you know fully updated properties? And, you know, I probably would stay away from the flips for a reason. The guy, the, the contractors, uh, they're not using realtors because they're, they're, their margins are too tight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the buyers right here with, they're coming down here. They want to hang their clothes up, man. 
I, I hear you. Well, hey, um, I don't want to take up too much of your time then. What I'll do is I'll text you over my contact information. If you come across any like sellers who have, you know, outdated properties or nightmare listings, hoarder houses, anything like that, I'm happy to take a look at them. Um, you know, what we'd normally do is we can work out something where you dual represent me or, you know, I can waive my buyer side commission so you can walk away with a little something extra. Um, well, you know what? This video is brought to you by Batch Leads. Batch Leads is my favorite software to help you find the best comps for your deals. If you want to figure out how to use it, click the link in the description and go to Batch Leads. Now stop watching me over here and watch me over there. Over here, over there, over there is better. You know, I'm just thinking that you have a listing coming up. Okay. It's like a five or six bedroom. Um, it needs work. The guy doesn't want to put in it. Um, he wants to walk away with eight bills though, but this is the 1.2, 1.4 house with a little bit of work, but he can't, can't grow. He okay. doesn't want to put more than a thousand bucks into it. I'm like, well, all right, you know, that's what you got to deal with. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you later today. I'm going to send you this address. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a plan. And, and uh, we'll go from there. Perfect. Yeah, I'll definitely take a look. If it's something that I think I can make happen, I'll send you an offer with a POF. And um, obviously, you can either represent me on the buyer side, or like I said, I can waive my commission so we can all make some money. You got it, brother. All right. Later today. Sounds good, Rich. I'll send you my contact info now. So you got it. Bye-bye. <laughs> all right. So if anyone was wondering why I was super short on that call, he was the personality type that was like, get the hell off the phone. And then when I kind of threw in like, hey, man, you can represent me too. Now he's like, okay, well, I might have something. So at the end of the day, um, I wasn't trying to keep him on the phone long because he really wasn't trying to talk. But when I kind of threw in that he can represent me on any of his deals to make a little bit of extra money, now he's now it's got him thinking because he's like, okay. I get to little I get to make more on the commission than I would dealing with another buyer. So, you know, I actually might have something for you. So that's kind of why I went that route. Let me text him my info real quick. Genius. <laughs> Andrea said he heard dollar signs. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's the language we speak, unfortunately, right? Real estate is very ego driven and money speaks to ego. So at the end of the day, you know, that's the game we play. Um, okay, cool. So let's go ahead and dive into MLS outreach. So as you can see, people are going to respond to you when you send text messages, right? So, you know, there's multiple people responding. Like we ended up at, uh, this is who we were at, I think, Becky. So all of these people, right, we can, you know, this person responded a minute ago. This person responded five minutes ago. So you can see people are going to be very actively responding, right? Um, and I can actually call this person right here because they're asking if we're a flipper or a wholesaler. Um, so I'll call them before we do agent outreach. But basically, what I would do if I was you, if you have the means to do this and your job doesn't take a whole bunch of time away, if you're in a nine to five, you go in the mornings and you send out about 50 to 100 text messages. So you have them go throughout the day. And then whenever you get a chance, you call these people and then you put them in your CRM after you talk to them and you just follow up with them once a month, right? Once you send out that, then you can jump onto the MLS and actually go after deals. Um, Sorry, someone text me. All right, cool. Let me call Tori real quick and see if we can explain this whole wholesaling thing to her. So Josh Juan, broker and owner at Lux Properties International. We we a message. Excuse me. Here we go. Hey Tori, this is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, this is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? Good, how are you? I am doing pretty good. I figured it was easier just to give you a call versus going back and forth on text. Hey, no worries. <laughs> yeah, cool. So yes, to answer your question, um, I mean, I am an end buyer. I'm looking to flip properties, um, but we do also do some wholesaling. 
I'm reaching out to you because I'm looking to take down another flip or buy and hold. And I came across your info on the MLS and just wanted to see if you had anything outdated that I could take a look at by chance. Yeah, I mean, we have, I have about 10 more coming under that 300,000 price point. Um, so if you just want to shoot me your email, I can, I can send you some of them. Okay, sweet. And are they um, like, what kind of condition are they in? It varies. Some are in great condition, some are in fair condition. You know, it, it really just varies okay. from listing to listing. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll definitely take a look at anything outdated. Um, you know, obviously the worst condition, the better for me. Um, but no, that sounds perfect. I would say anything between like two and 400,000 is going to be my sweet spot. So I'll go ahead and text you over my info. And then whenever those opportunities become available, please send them over. All right. Will do. Have a great day. You too, Tori. Have a good one. Okay. Bye. Bye. And that was kind of a weird one too. She was really just short on the phone or maybe I butchered that one, uh, but she's got 10 leads. So we're going to put her as a hot lead and follow up. All right. So now it now let's say we're going after Tampa or, you know, this whole area, right? How I typically like to do this in Zillow and find potential, you know, deals that we can go after. So I come over here to for sale and I hit this drop down. Now I'm not interested in foreclosures, auctions, coming soon, new construction by owner. The reason I'm not interested in any of this is because by owners are typically out to lunch on their price. So get them off my list. New construction, it's brand new. So again, we're going after outdated properties. So get that off my list. You can keep coming soon on there. The only reason I don't go after coming soon is because it tends to have already a lot of eyes on it. And they're just trying to get that, um, you know, they're trying to gain attention before it actually hits market. So we want it before coming soon, if it's an off market listing, or in my opinion, if it's just been listed, right? Um, again, that's just preference based. So if you want to, you can select coming soon. And then I don't like going after auctions or foreclosures because they can get a little bit messy. Um, again, that's going to be my preference, uh, but I typically like to stick with buy agent properties. Now, again, if we know that our buyers are going to be buying under about $500,000, we can select up to $500,000. So it's going to you know, limit that. And then we can come over here to property type. Let's say for this instance, we're only looking for houses. We're not looking for condos, lots, lands, apartments, mobile homes, anything like that, right? So we're only looking for listings that are houses. And then if we come over here, again, we can filter it out by year build. So let's say most of the properties we're going after are going to be 1990 and under. We don't care about how long it's been listed on the MLS at the moment. And then we want to play with the keywords. So you can do like investor special, you can do as is, you can do needs work, needs re, uh, repairs, um, whatever, it, whatever it might be, right? Basically what you're looking for is uh, needs repairs is probably not the best like, example, but if you come down here, this is going to be the description where it's pulling keywords from. So you can see again, investor special right at the top. So what you can do is you can read these descriptions and start to pull out keywords that you see a lot. So again, anything that might pop up in there is what you're going to search in the keywords. So if we do investor special, see now we have everything that has the keywords investor special. So what we can do from here is we can come over here to sort by newest. And then it's going to filter everything out by the newest it's been listed, right? So if we scroll down, let's say we don't want to go after, you know, this property right here because it was listed six days ago. Maybe that's too new. What we can do is we can scroll down and start to figure out what's an ideal date for us. So, okay, 24 days on market in this market, it might be a good, you know, potential to go after. But if we go through the pictures, right? We're trying to figure out, is this outdated? Does this look like a first time home buyer is going to come in here and live in it? Or does it look like an investor is going to come in and pick this up? And the reason I say a first time home buyer is because they're going to be willing to buy a home in lesser quality condition than someone who is moving on to their third or fourth house, right? Someone who's moving on their third or fourth house wants it fully updated. Whereas someone who's maybe buying their first time 
will do with an outdated kitchen, but they still want it in good condition, right? So this is an example right here. I'm not really sure what's going on with the stove and everything. So this might be a good lead to go after, but at the end of the day, the property is in decent condition. So I could see a first time home buyer coming in and moving here and just getting those appliances. So this one's gonna be kind of preference based, right? Uh, but the fact that it's been listed, maybe we do wanna call them and, and gather some information on this one. But let's see if we can actually find uh, a worse condition property that we can give a call to, right? So if we click into here, we can scroll down. Um, it's not fully updated, but again, it's not bad. Um, and what you can do is you can come in here and hit save and you can build out a list, right? So you go in here and you're like, oh yeah, this one looks great. Let's save. And then we move on to the next one. And then you can come over to your saved homes and it's going to show you all of the properties that you saved and that you can give a call to. So before we jump in and we start giving calls or we start making calls, um, let's do needs work. So before we start making calls, the one thing that I want to point out is when we're talking to um, when we're talking to people about their listings, right? I gather the acronym called COMPT. And just like Compton, like um, the Compton calls, right? So we do condition, occupancy, motivation, price, timeline, all right? And now you can't just come out of the gate and ask all of these questions because it, a lot of times they won't disclose it. So we have to be a little bit we have to word it a certain way to be able to figure out exactly what we're trying to get out of the agents. So when we come, when we're asking about condition, maybe we say things like, I see that the property has some pictures online. Is there anything that you can tell me that I can't see within the pictures that I would need to take note of? For instance, any leaks, mold, foundation issues, anything like that? Boom. Occupancy. Okay, cool. It looks like the property is currently occupied. Is it tenant occupied or owner occupied? Okay, great. Will it be vacant at close or are they looking to sell it occupied? Boom. Motivation. A lot of times they won't just tell you the motivation of the homeowner. So you have to go left. And what I mean by going left is you a lot of times just tell them something wrong and they'll correct you. So for instance, if you if there's tenants in there, you could be like, okay, so I'm assuming the homeowner is just looking to sell because they're tired of being a landlord. If that's accurate, they'll be like, yeah, that's pretty much it. If it's not, they'll correct you and they'll be like, no, actually she's moving to Texas and she just doesn't want to hold any of her properties in Florida because it will be a headache. And you're like, okay, that makes sense, right? Um, again, you can't get it out of them every time, but that's a great way to figure out the motivation behind it. Price. Um, again, it's already listed, so we can't just come out of the gate and say, well, will they accept 100000 under listing? Because absolutely no, they won't, right? Well, that's what they're going to tell you. How you can figure out price is you can say, hey, I've seen that this property has been listed on the MLS for 20 days. Have you been getting a lot of interest? And if so, has that interest been coming from homeowners or other investors like myself? If they say other investors, that gives you a good indicator of you know, where you need to be at. If it's homeowners, it's probably going to be higher than the investors. But you can also throw in there like, okay, based on, okay, so you're getting a lot of interest and offers from other investors. Based on where their offers are coming in at, are you thinking this is going to sell at listing or below listing? And they might be like, oh, well, we've gotten you know a bunch of offers above or at listing or below, whatever it might be. Uh, but that's a great way to figure out, you know, where other offers are coming in at and be able to help you figure out where you need to make an offer at. And then finally, timeline. You just ask them, do they have any sort of deadline in which they need to sell the property by? All right. So now that I shared all of that, let's go ahead and just start calling some properties. So again, if we click in here, um, this one's fully updated. So we would not want to call this one. Um, you know, this one 
is not fully updated, right? We see the bathroom is outdated. The kitchen is not fully updated. So let's go ahead. And this has been listed for 53 days. So let's go ahead and give them a call and see if, you know, we can get some information about this. So we're calling Stephanie. Um, let's see. Your call has been forwarded. All right, so hold on. Let me just see if she was calling someone. One second. Morning. Hey, Stephanie. Yes. Hi, this is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing fine, thank you. Yeah, so I was giving you a call about a property you have listed at uh, or off of South Highland Ave. Yes. Yeah. Is it still available by chance? Yes, it is. Perfect. So I'm actually an investor in the area and I came across this property and I'd love to make an offer on it. Uh, but I did have a couple questions. Is now a good time for you? Yes. Yes, I can. I can talk. OK, cool. Sweet. So I can obviously get a general idea of the condition of the property. It looks like it's you know been well kept. It just needs some minor updates here and there. Um, you know, 511 is pretty much done uh 515 there's two buildings okay i'm looking at 511 okay so you're interested in 511 not both I, I mean i might be interested in both i haven't seen 515 yet yeah 515 if you put it up you'll be able to see the pictures 515 was being used as a real estate office um it needs to be gutted or you know the bathroom it just has a toilet in there you have to build a shower you really have to build a bathroom Okay. Maybe it's good to be to gut, you know, you can make an offer on it's listed for 250. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I mean, I'll probably end up making an offer on both of them, to be honest. Um, so I'm taking a look at 515 right now. And um obviously I can tell the condition based on the pictures, but is there anything major that I would need to take note of that the pictures can't tell me, like leaks, mold, um, foundation issues, termite issues, anything like that? Um, I think it had ants. I haven't seen, I think there was termite and it's treated. I haven't seen any deterioration, um, but that structure is wood frame. The other one is concrete block. So a wood frame structure, you always have to treat it. Right. And you said 515 is wood frame and 511 is, is concrete. Correct. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Um, and then... For 511, is there anything that I would need to take note of or that's pretty that's good as well? It's it's good to go. It has it has three bedrooms, uh, one and a half bathroom. The area that has the half bathroom um it can be used as office space or even another bedroom. Okay. Um, so you know, there is zone, they're both zoned commercial. Oh, really? So yes, they're zoned commercial, however, um, you can use them as residential as long if you're renting it. You just have to make sure for, for the city of Clearwater you pay the taxes. Okay, that's I got what you. keeps everybody off your back. So, so if I ended up just flipping it though, there wouldn't be any issues in regards to reselling it to a homeowner, right? Right. Okay, great, awesome. And I'm assuming they're both vacant, correct? They're both vacant. No, the one on five five fifteen, you can actually rezone that. The one next to the gas station because it's next to the gas station um the city said you cannot rezone it so i just want to give you all that information up front okay. however what you use it for because it's set up as a, a single family home oh. right right okay so 515 can be rezoned 511 cannot correct okay gotcha okay sweet and then um so word was this just like well, I'm assuming like the homeowner lived in the property at five eleven and then their workspace was five fifteen and they're just like moving now or what's going why are they looking to sell? Um, she's an investor and she had the property for a while. She made she upgraded the she did all the repairs on five eleven. Okay. And uh, she did the cleaning up on five fifteen. Um, there is a shed in the back. I don't know if you drove by. There's a shed in the back of 515 and it's encroaching on 511. The shed could be removed or shipped over. And it looked like they were actually using it as an apartment. So it's, it appeared to me. 
Oh, did I lose you? Hello? I think I lost you, Stephanie. Oh, I'm back. Did I, did I lose you? I was going to say, I can hear you now. I lost you for a second. Oh, I apologize. I'm, I'm driving, but I can talk. You're good. Um, there's never any, like, <laughs> I'm always moving. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. So what I was saying is that there's a shed, like a, a shed in the back okay. of 515, and it's encroaching about two feet over, over on 511. So the people, the person that owned that did own both parcels, just like the current one. And uh, it looked like they were using it as an apartment because it's set up inside like an apartment. I gotcha. And so was the homeowner, was, was she just renting out 511 and then renting out 515 as an office space? No, she never did anything yet. Oh, so she just bought these recently. She bought it last year and she just put it, you know, fix it up and put it on the market. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um, okay, cool. So she's looking, so she, she ended up doing 511 and then 515 was just kind of overwhelming. And so she's just looking to sell it as is. Yes. 515 as is. Okay. She actually was going to knock everything down and build duplex on each parcel, which you can also do. So if you choose as an investor, if you want to really hold it and make money, which is an option, 515, knock it down and put a duplex there. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely something that I'll um I'll have to play around with and see if we can make happen. Um cool. So I see that it has been listed for, you know, I see 515 has been about 44 days and 511 has been 53 days. Have you been getting a, a decent amount of interest on it and in offers? Or like what's yeah, going on yes, with that? I, I... I have been getting a lot of interest and I have gotten a few offers. Um, one, of, one of them was a good offer, and but then he decided to buy another commercial property. Uh, it was within the, his inspection period. So, okay. Um, yeah, but the, the homes are, be, be, are staying longer on the market now. So the time frame does not affect the, the price. So I know that's how a lot of people, investors look at it. Or if this is on the market, there is negotiation. Yes, there is negotiation. I agree with that. But um, homes are staying longer on the market now. Right. Well, I was just asking because a lot of times, you know, when they've sat a while, a lot of the offers are coming in a lot lower or maybe um, if they've come in at yeah. listing price for Correct. whatever reason, the homeowner is is kind of not accepted anything yet. So that's really why I was yeah. just asking. Um, yeah, a lot of investors think that they still... That, that we're still living in 2010. I don't know what made them think that way. But um, nobody giving away their homes. I have homes listed too, and um, I'm not giving them away. I'd rather just rent them. Yeah, I don't no. think anybody's going to do that. Yeah, and I don't think, um, at least for me, right, I don't expect anyone to give their homes away. Um, you know, we're not trying to buy anything at, at super discounts here, but we do buy them at what they're valued at, right? So, like, just like you wouldn't go buy a 2004 Honda Accord that has 200,000 miles for the price of a 2022 one, but, you know, we're trying to give the what, it, what it's valued at, right? So, yeah, if it's a reasonable price within value, of course, I think, you know, that would work. Right. Okay, sweet. And then um, is there like, I, I know you just said that, you know, the timeline doesn't really matter. Um, for the homeowner, though, are they looking, do they need to sell by a certain date? Or are they pretty flexible in regards to, you know, are they just waiting out, you know, until someone comes in at their number? As long as they find the right buyer, they will sell it. She, it's not like she's hurting for money. Okay. So no real deadline on her end. Obviously, the no, sooner the better, but no real deadline. Yeah, as long as she have the right buyer and she's satisfied, she's okay. Perfect. Awesome. Well, let me go ahead and run my numbers um, and figure out exactly where we need to be at on these two. And then I will give you a call back later this afternoon with an offer in mind. And if it sounds like something your seller will entertain, we'll go ahead and put it in writing and send it over with a POF and then go from there. Awesome. If you don't get me on the phone, just send me a text because I have an event from two o'clock today. So in case, you know, you can email me, you can text me if you can't reach me by phone. Okay, perfect. Definitely will do. I'll send you over my contact info via text as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. No problem, Stephanie. Have a good one. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. All right. So...
hopefully everyone got some value out of that. So I, every call I try to go through and grab the, the condition, occupancy, motivation, price timeline. And that what that allows us to do is to essentially use that as um, negotiation techniques. And uh, so make sure you all hit this poll. Yeah, we got to see 100% over here. Quit playing. Um, so yeah, this allows us to help figure out what we're doing with negotiation, negotiating points, right? So for instance, if they needed to sell next week, that helps us come in at a price that makes sense to close next week, right? I'm not going to offer, you know, 200,000 and they're asking 200,000, but they want to close next week. No, I might have to offer 160 if you're expecting me to close in seven days. Now, if we're talking 30 days, I might be able to make it happen at 200, right? So um, yeah, that's why I gather that information. And then I do have a video on my YouTube going over exactly what it looks like when you're negotiating. Um, in this video, or I guess in this training, I'm just going to focus on calling new agents so you guys can hear what that sounds like. And then at the end, if we have time to, you know, reach out and submit an offer, we definitely can, but it just is going to take a little bit too long to underwrite everything for me. And then, you know, be able to submit offers. I like to underwrite it all at once. So I like to comp every property I have, and then I go back and I submit all of the offers at once. So I try to stay in the flow of things. So I try to hit MLS all at once, and then I'll comp all my properties all at once, and then I'll call all of those agents and make offers all at once. Again, let's see. Um, this is fully updated, so we would not want this one. This looks pretty outdated. So let's go ahead and give them a call 99 days. All right, cool. I think this is going to be a wrong number. Thank you for calling Silver Real Estate Group. If you know your party's extent. All right. So what you can also do is you can put quotation, her name, and then quotation. So it's only going to search her name. And then um, you can do realtor as well. <clears throat> so you have, she popped up a whole bunch of different places. And that's her office number. See if we can find her actual cell. Nope. And I don't like to spend too much time trying to find. Uh, it's a not a real estate agent. All right. There we go. Thank you for calling Samantha Dammer. The hell's going on right here? <laughs> Thank you for calling Samantha Dan. This house is setting it, setting anyone up for failure. Could you imagine coming home drunk or you're just sick and you're trying to go to the bathroom and you got a damn step up? Just know you're eating shit every single time you try to go to the bathroom. Every time. All right, cool. We're not going to keep going through. So <clears throat> I pulled a whole list. I'm just going to start calling some of them so we don't have to... Um, 
you know, waste too much time trying to find deals, but you can find houses pretty quickly. Um, let's go ahead and call this person. Hey, and this is Jackson Shoemaker with the Deals at Real Estate team. Yeah, hi, this is Jacob. I was calling about um, a property that I had listed or that was listed off of Leonard Drive. Okay, yes. Uh, what's your question? Yeah, is this the, did I reach the best person to talk to in regards to it? You reached the correct number. I'm uh, Bill's uh, team lead and I'm familiar with the property. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm actually an investor, um, and I would love to make an offer on the property, but I did have a couple questions prior to doing so. Um, okay. So my first one is I can obviously get a general idea of the condition of the property. Obviously, it looks like, um, you know, it's been kept pretty well, but there are some places that need minor updating. Is there okay. anything major that I can't see in the pictures that I would need to take note of, like any foundation issues, structural issues, mold, leaks, anything like that? So let me start by saying, uh, and I'm going to answer your question in full. Um, you may already know some of these things. Virginia, or excuse me, uh, Maryland has a seller disclosure, which I will, uh, I can send you a copy if I can get an email from you that was filled out by the owner mm -hmm. that um, tends to address uh, what they are aware of um, and are publicly disclosing about those things. It's a couple pages. Uh, so if you're interested in that, um, I can send that over to you. Yeah, for sure. And then just off the top of your head, is there anything that I would be, you know, need to be aware of? Or is it, you know, pretty much? Yeah, what I'm, I'm obligated to give you honesty on this. So it was listed um, a few months ago by us. And then the uh, the basement had a, um, a small flood. Okay. Like it, it had some standing water down there. And that it actually was the impetus to, after the water was drained out and the damage was repaired, to, uh, to have those bedrooms out there. <laughs> Okay. Um, with egress windows and with uh, new uh, flooring and, and all that. And so that was sort of the part where it was taken off the market, that was taken care of, and then we had those made into full bedroom. Because it was originally listed as a two bedroom, two and a half bath home with okay. an unfinished basement. Now the basement is partly finished, much, much better space. Um, in fact, the basement actually looks great. And uh, the two bedrooms were turned into conforming. Okay, cool. And so are the is the are the pictures of the basement that I'm looking at on Zillow, are those all accurate for the most part? They're recent, yes. Yeah. Okay. Those are recent. Gotcha. And is there it doesn't look like any mold or anything like that? Is there any mold that you guys are aware of from the from the leaks or the flooding? None. No, none that I'm aware of. Okay, sounds good. Um and then other than the basement, nothing, nothing major that I would need to be, you know, take note of. No, uh, I would, I'll have to point you to, I'm happy to take down your email address and get this over to you right away. I have to point you to the seller disclosure on that, Okay. but uh, there's not anything that is in my brain that I'm holding any deep dark secrets about. <laughs> okay, cool. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll go ahead and text you over my contact information um, after we jump off the call so you can send that over. Um, and then I, it's probably a dumb question, but I always have to ask. It looks vacant. Um, so is it, it's going to be vacant at close, correct? It is fully vacant. It will be vacant upon it being conveyed. Yep. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Just always have to ask. Um, and then, so it looks like, <clears throat> I'm assuming it was recently listed after the whole basement issue was um, you know, getting resolved. Are you guys getting a decent amount of interest and offers on it since you've relisted? We have not received uh, an offer since uh, relisting it uh, 12 days ago, today being the 12th day, okay. but we have had some interest, uh, like you, people calling in, asking questions, sort of circling around with nothing in hand. Gotcha. And are you thinking based on the interest that you've been getting, <clears throat> are you thinking an investor like myself is going to come in or are you thinking a homeowner is going to grab it? <laughs> the property has characteristics that could be attractive to a variety of folk, but people who have a bit of money put into it would probably benefit most. 
Gotcha. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um, sweet. Okay, cool. And then in regards to a timeline, obviously the sooner the better that we can close on it. Um, but is there any sort of deadline in which they have to sell by? Like, do they need to sell by November 30th or this just isn't working? He's not under any pressure to the owner to um, be rid of the property in okay. any sense. And so it's been, it's hanging out. And, you know, if you needed a longer close or a shorter close, obviously shorter is preferred right. because that's one less, you know, one less month or one less amount of time before of utilities can be transferred and mortgage payments can stop, that sort of thing. But if you wanted a little longer, I don't think that that would be a deal breaker. Okay, cool. Awesome. I just wanted to make sure that there was no sort of deadline in which she had to absolutely sell by. Um, like you said, obviously, we're trying to close, yeah. you know, within 30 days. So we're not trying to drag out closing by any means, but just checking. Right. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I think and there's no, no special, no special sauce or any like particular criteria above and beyond the usual suspect, like price, contingencies, that sort of thing. Okay, sweet. Awesome. Well, I think I have enough information to be able to put together an offer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and underwrite this this afternoon, and I'll give you a call back with a number in mind. If it sounds like something that your seller will entertain or if we're pretty close, we'll go ahead and put this in writing and send it over to you with a POF, and then um, we'll go from there. Okay. Right after this call ends, I'm going to text you from our uh, team line that okay. goes to me and to my four other teammates, including Bill Judd team lead and then uh that way if you text that number it will go to all of us perfect sounds good well i'll be on the lookout for that text and then once you send it over i'll just reply with my contact info so you can lock me in and then um hopefully we can make something happen on this one yeah fingers crossed and what was your first name again it's jacob simpson okay jacob simpson all right thanks so much jacob for talking no problem man have a good one bye bye all right, cool. So a lot of you are probably wondering why I chose this property to go after. So you, as you can see, we do have, um, at first glance, it looks like they did kind of keep it nice, but this for the DMV is not a fully updated home. So Rockville and Silver Spring are, you're going to have like very high ARVs a lot of times. So this would not fly. Um, and especially when we get down here to the bathroom, right, this is outdated, the tiles. Um, so this is why I called this property, because to his point, a homeowner or a, an investor who came in here who actually had money to go and invest in this and to make this an immaculate house is going to be much better off. Uh, again, I don't know the actual ARV off the top of my head. I'm assuming that this is probably out to lunch a little bit. Um, but again, in, in this area, we can get up to 800,000, 900, 1.1, 1.2 million ARVs, depending on, you know, how nice of the area this is in. So then we would just move on to the next one. <clears throat> um, so then we'll give this person a call right here. By the way, there's lots of love in the chat about these calls, Jacob. I appreciate it. Everyone smash the heart buttons. And then we got to jump back in with the polls. Make sure you answer the polls. Sign up if you haven't already. Go get some deals. Send me your deals. And let's get some money. All right. Um, so this one's under contract. So we wouldn't even waste our time with this one. But again, we can look at the kitchen, right? Um, we got the time capsule stove right there. We got the checkered walls. So this would be a great opportunity to go after. Uh, in all honesty, I would say maybe still give them a call because you never know if a contract is going to fall out or not. Um, but for today's sake, we're just going to move on to the next one. And then again, this one doesn't have any pictures. It's hard to sell a property with no pictures. So that tells me there's something wrong with this property. Uh, <clears throat> is that Dorothea? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> Hold on. They just sent me, um, I got to send my contact information one sec.
All right, cool. So I just sent them my contact information. So now let's call Dorothea and see if we can get her on the phone. So again, the name of the game is really, we're just trying to find listings that look outdated that we can give a call to and make an offer on. Hey, hey Dorothea. Hi, yes, Dorita. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, Dorita. This is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? Hey, how are you, Jacob? I am doing great. Thanks for asking. Um, so I was giving you a call about a property I believe you have listed off of Valleywood Drive. Correct, yes. Yeah, so I'm actually an investor in the area and I'm definitely interested in the property, but I did have a couple questions prior to making an offer. Is now a good time for you? Yes, it is. Perfect. Um, so obviously taking a look at it, I see there's only a couple pictures online, so it's hard for me to kind of gauge the condition of the overall interior of the property. Correct. Can you tell me a little bit about the inside? Is it in good condition? Does it need work? Kind of fill me in on that. Um, it is in good condition. Um, some items have been upgraded. For example, the roof has been upgraded. Okay. Um, the furnace is upgraded. And there's been some painting, but obviously uh, uh, it has been lived in for a number of years. So it probably does need um, additional painting. Um, this cosmetic type items. Um, there may be a couple of appliances that may not be in working order, uh, specifically the dishwasher, you know, things like that. <laughs> but it has been livable. There's also a second kitchen in the basement. Oh, nice. I know, right? So, I mean, it's it's great for multifamilies, which is exactly what this has been used for. Oh, sweet. Um, mm -hmm. yep. multi, sorry, I'm just taking some notes. Um, Okay, cool. And you said that uh, it had a new roof and new furnace. When were those replaced? Within the last, uh, less than two years. Le less than two years? Correct. Okay, cool. Perfect. Um, awesome. And there's nothing major that I would need to take note of, like leaks, mold, foundation issues, anything like that? No, no, nothing like that. Okay, cool. Um, and then I noticed you said that they were using it kind of as multifamily. Is it currently occupied? It is, but I understand the occupants um, that are living downstairs will be vacating by the end of the month at oh. the latest. Okay. They're, so, they're packing up now. Okay, so vacant at close? Yes, vacant at close, definitely. Okay, cool. And are they just looking to sell because they're kind of a, you know, tired landlord or? Yeah, yeah, basically, I mean, yeah, that's basically it. And they have been renting these are family members that live there so they've been oh, living there for 20 years and the owners just want to sell it they feel like now is the time to sell it and no that definitely doing. makes sense i mean after 20 years you, you know even if you love the property it's time to move on sometimes <laughs> True. um okay cool and then i noticed it's only been listed for about 10 days have you all been getting a decent amount of interest and offers on it or not really um, yes, we have been getting a decent amount, yes. Okay, sweet. And are you thinking based on your interest, are you thinking it's going to be a, an investor like myself who picks this one up, or are you thinking a home buyer or like a first-time home buyer or something's going to grab it? I think either. Either one, um, for an investor purpose, especially if, if it's going to be a buy and hold. Um, I mean, I think it would be great. I'm not sure about a flip, um, mainly because, I mean, it's listed at market. Okay. And they, they want to sell at market. I gotcha. And um what were the what were the tenants paying? I'm assuming they were it's since they was family members and it was so long they were probably paying pretty low, but um it was close to market, but I mean a little less than market, but it was close. Okay. It looks like market value is around like twenty eight hundred a month. Correct. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Um and then my last question is, obviously, the sooner that we can close, the better, um, but is there any sort of deadline in which they absolutely have to close by? We definitely, if we can close within the next 30 to 45 days, we're, we're very happy about that. Okay. And the, at the latest. Sounds good. Well, let me go ahead and run my numbers and see exactly where I need to be at and see if I can make this one happen. Um, okay. And then in any case, I'll give you a call back this afternoon and let you know where I need to be at. And if it's something that your seller might entertain, we'll go ahead and put it in writing and send it over via with a POF. 
Um, and then, yeah, we'll go from there. And then do you possibly have any other, you know, potential flips or rentals that I could take a look at? Uh, not at this time. I just set, I just uh, closed on one a couple of days ago. That was in Bethesburg. Oh, well, congrats. Well, thanks. So I may have some upcoming ones. Do you also consider condos? So I don't really do too much condos, to be honest. Um, we do a lot of like single family homes, townhouses, and we'll look at multifamily between like two to four units, but condos, not too much just because of like the HOA and condo fees that get involved and sometimes you can't rent them and sometimes they can get a little messy. Okay, I understand. Yeah. But anything okay. else, if you come across any like, you know, nightmare properties, hoarder lit, hoarder houses, anything that's very outdated or, you know, just needs some love put into it, definitely feel free to send it over. Okay, sounds great. All right. Well, I will go ahead and give you a call later today with an offer and hopefully we can make something happen on this one. Great. Sounds good. Thank you. No worries. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. So she said Smooth. it was listed at market value. So I don't know if we'll, we'll see. We'll have to look into it. Yeah. Do you guys want me to keep going? Yeah, let's do one more, Jacob. I mean, you're, you're crushing this bro, but we'll do one more and then uh, um, maybe have, ask a couple questions. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Um, so let's go ahead and call this one right here. Again, the inside of the property, I don't know what happened in here, um, but definitely needs some work. Been listed for 70 days. So let's go ahead and see. Thank you for calling on Imposter Real Estate. How can I help you? Yeah, hi. I was trying to get a hold of uh, David Maples then. Sure, one second. Awesome. Thank you. I called mm -hmm. the wrong number. David Maples, Hey, David, this is Jacob. How are you doing this morning? I'm okay. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I can't complain. Um, so I was actually giving you a call about a property I believe you have listed at uh, 6413 Allegheny Ave. Yes, Jacob, how can I help you? Yeah, so I'm actually an investor in the area and I'm definitely interested in making an offer on it, but I did have a couple questions. Um, is it still available by chance? Yeah, it's fully available. Perfect. I, I, two things I'll tell you. One, it needs a lot of work. It, it's it's a complete, re, you know, um, I guess you could say it's not a tear down, but it's a, it's a kind of a gut job although the floors could be resalvaged. And two, the owners are not very flexible on their price. So I I, I cannot get a response to offers under 500000 from the owners. Okay, so they're, state sale. so they're pretty firm at five hundred k. Yeah, I I haven't, I mean, I've had lots of offers. I've actually had some over 500 that have turned down, but I've had lots of offers, three or 400000 and. I they they won't even respond to those. So oh, I, 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 all I can do is just I I do share every offer I get, but but they they don't respond to those offers. I gotcha. Um, so I can I can obviously tell that it does need a lot of work based on the can like the pictures that I'm seeing. Is there anything? Yeah. Like, is there anything major like leaks, mold, foundation issues, anything like that that I need to take note of? I don't think it has a foundation issue, but it had a leak in there. And I was told by somebody who's a neighbor that a pipe had burst in there last winter. 
So it has potential mold from that situation. I don't, I don't think it necessarily had a wet basement before that, but it, it, it did have water infiltration at that point. And right now all the utilities are off. Okay. So I, I don't know if that leak was fixed. It probably wasn't. They probably just turned the water off or something, I guess. Okay, I gotcha. And I'm assuming it's vacant? But, um, it's vacant, yeah. Yeah, it's really, you wouldn't want to look there. Yeah. It, it, it has some damage in the roof, um, you know, where some of the, uh, it must have a, a slight leak, I think, on one side of the roof. Um, and some of the some of the roof material came down in the corner. Um, the, the wood floors could probably be refinished and um, uh, and are usable. It has a walkout basement at the back, but um, but it, it probably needs. I've, I've got estimates between two twenty five and three hundred thousand dollars worth of work, according to people that have looked at it. But you know, I I, I haven't got estimates myself. I gotcha. Um, and then my last question is, I do notice that it has like uh, the window AC unit. Does it have HVAC or does that does it need HVAC added? Um, I, I believe it had HVAC at one point. I'm trying to remember now, um, but you're going to you're going to have to replace all all those things because the furnace looks beat up and pretty old. It's a gas furnace. It has gas electric and, and it has a circuit breaker box but you're going to need to replace that furnace and and i just it does it did have THC. now i remember it, it has those round vents that you used to get in the older homes in the 50s okay so it, it does it did have central air but i i, I think you're gonna i think you'd have to replace definitely the the the, the, the uh this you know the, the gas the gas funds that's the thc right um, so I guess what are the sellers' intention? I know you said obviously they've declined some at five hundred and some above it. Are, are, I mean, are they like because the market is shifting, right? So you know, the longer they wait, the less likely it is that someone's going to come in at their asking price. So I guess what is their intention if this doesn't sell? Like, do they have the means just to sit on this and hold it, or? You know, they're not in any sort of time crunch I to get this sold? I, I'm not privy to that information. They told me if things don't work out, they're going to go in another direction, but they didn't reveal to me what that means. I gotcha. So um, I'm working every week. I'm trying to show them, I'm showing them the latest market statistics. That's all I can do. Yeah. You know, you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. So, you know, you, we just see what happens with it basically. Right. But I, I'm, I don't want to discourage offers. But oh, no, I make an offer on everything. You're not discouraging anything from me. But um, in any case, I mean, let me uh, let me go ahead and, and underwrite this and see exactly where I need to be at number wise. Um, you know, I'll still make an offer even if it's under 500. Hopefully it's above. Um, but in any case, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully we can make something happen on this one. So I'll, I'll put my numbers together and then give you a call later this afternoon and, and we'll go from there. Yeah, if you're in the area and want to see it, I'm happy to show it to you. Um, but yeah, it does, it does need a lot of work. I mean, they haven't even cleared up the junk in there yet, but it's not that much junk. Yeah. But it is, it's, the nice thing about it is if you read the listings opposite of the park, it's close to downtown one mile for Metro, which is a good thing. It has had several million dollar plus sales around it. But, you know, we know the market's slowing. Um, and, uh, you know, the question is, do you want to bump it up, add another story, bump it out in the back, or just redo it without changing the footprint? And if you do that, you're probably in the 900s. Um, you wouldn't be able to get over a million unless you make it bigger by expanding the back or, or, or adding to the top, I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean, hopefully we'll be able to make something happen. I, you know, I've done quite a few deals in like the Temple Hill, Silver Spring area. So, you know, this is my stomping ground. I don't know if we're going to go ahead and put uh, an additional floor on it just because that's going to add a long time to the project. And with the market the way it is, that could make things a little bit iffy. Um, but you know, if we yeah. see a solid ARV, um, like if we if I can get you know eight hundred thousand without doing that. Um, you know, I think 500,000 is definitely a reasonable number, uh, and we can even get pretty creative with our offers to the point where I think, you know, we'll be able to get the homeowners on our side on this one. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I have it on the listing here. I think I just called the wrong number. Uh, let me see. It's the yeah, seven two seven two five three, right? Yeah, that's my cell phone. Yeah. Okay, perfect. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and send you over my contact info so you have it, and then I'll touch base with you later this afternoon with the number in mind. And uh, if it's something your sellers will entertain, we'll go ahead and put it in writing with a POF and go from there. All right, David, you have a wonderful rest of the day. Talk to you later, ma'am. Bye. Jeez, bro. <clears throat> I mean, could you get any smoother? Guys, can we throw it up? Can we give Jacob just a tremendous amount of love in the chat? I, I We learned how you find alignment with agents. Your communication skills, brother, I think this was a master class. Hey, this was a master up. class today on bring me on the challenges, <laughs> bro. You, you crushed it. Cru Who wants to see Jacob on more challenges, by the way. Hey, smash that heart button. If you want to see me on more challenges, you want to see Jacob on more in. challenges. Did this guy show up today or what? Holy moly, bro. Guys, new, he is a star rising. This man here came in. He showed up. He showed us exactly all the things you're bro. I'm no jokes. You are incredible. I incredible. I was getting text messages from folks watching being like, this man is blowing my mind. <laughs> I Br Brad Hulkman from a and E literally texted me and said, Jacob is amazing. Hey, Brad, bring me on TV. Right. That's what I'm saying. So Jacob, fantastic job, dude. Fan you, you caught the attention of, of executive producers in Hollywood, you've got the ear and the eyeballs of folks watching. This was one of the challenges where our numbers climbed during the during the time. Interesting. It, it doesn't always happen. It, typically, the numbers start higher and then they go down. And this one, uh, people were letting each other know, hey, you need to hop onto this challenge right now because Jacob is smashing and the numbers started to climb. Um, everybody, it. that was amazing. Emily, you had a question for Jacob, right? Yeah, a lot of people that came later on in the event wanted to know how you pulled that list from realtors.com and then uploaded it into batch. Yeah, so it's really just building um <clears throat> like just building a spreadsheet. So like copy and pasting the um the agent's name and info from realtor or going into the actual MLS and like pulling it her address jacob are you could you could you create a loom video for us yeah on how to do that yeah there's another way i don't so it kind of is contradictory and i am actually i would love to talk to batch and figure out how we can add this into batch's system prop stream makes it very very easy to pull a list so like if anyone's in my market i can pull lists you know very quickly, but I promise, like, I have two ideas that I have for batch that I think will really, there wouldn't even be a prop stream with this. So one is if batch leads can figure out how to filter by previous owner entity so that we can go for look up only entities who owned the property previously. So now we can go after all the fix and flippers and then have the agent's info so that way, when we export the list, we can pull that. So awesome. if you're in my market, I'm not trying to point anyone to PropStream. I don't use it really other than for that. But if you need a mark, if you need a list in my market, feel free to reach out to me. I'm assuming we maybe have one with Astro as well. Um, well, we and, give Astro students get the list to any, uh, the entire agents list in the entire country. So boom, if you're an Astro student, in Astro. yeah, if you're an Astro student, you have the lists, any, any all the lists you want. Also. Um, we will for I I I I imagine Emily, are you here with us? You are, right? Yeah. Yep. What we can do is we can create um, uh, agents lists for uh, action takers who took action on batch, 
and we can email those those lists out. So if you guys took action and signed up with Batch, we will email you an agent's list so you don't have to worry about having to go and scrape it and do all that extra mumbo jumbo. We'll just give it to you. So um, you just reach out to us. What was the process that we did that through last time, Emily, so that we can replicate it? Um, you can go ahead and email me at damgdesign at gmail and I will get that to you done and done, baby. Cool. So we'll just give you guys a list. F it. And That's then I'll how we also roll. put together, I'll put together a video, but yeah, I would definitely just sign up and get the list because scrubbing MLS and sheets is not always the funnest thing to do. So, you know, ideally just get yourself a list. Yep. And our list is actually uh, current to 2022. We refreshed it just recently. I spent another $19,000 buying a new list and we've got all the current cell phone numbers for every agent in America. So if you're hey, I mean, trying to get it. I was going to say, if it's that's worth signing up for batch in and of itself. So I mean, I'm so. saying that, look, guys, you get a lot with this community. You get a lot in this, in this, in this, uh, in this world. Jacob, thank you again so much for the incredible day. Guys, we have day three tomorrow, and it's going to be bomb. Emily, what are we doing tomorrow? Tabitha is coming <laughs> on, and she's going to just do a lot more agent outreach. She is awesome, guys. She's a full-time mom, part-time nurse, and she invests like a mad woman. Right, Jamil? Guys, you don't even understand. Tabitha has been a phenomenal shooting star in the Astro community. She came in full-time nurse, an ER nurse, tired of just life after COVID through, you know, nursing. It was really hard on her. She also has young children and a growing family. And she wanted to figure out how she could, how she could get her life, um, you know, put together in such a way that she didn't have to do that job anymore. And guess what happened? She joined Astro Flipping and now she's making like 30 grand a month and she's quitting her job as a nurse. Pow, you're gonna hear from her tomorrow. Everybody give it up for Jacob. Also, if you guys haven't already, go check out my IG. I just posted a new Astro ad. It's pretty dope. Also, follow Jacob Simpson if you haven't already. His uh, his uh, IG information is in the chat. Jacob, any other information you want to give to the folks before we end? Um, if you're in D.C., Northern Virginia, Maryland, Tampa, Jacksonville, or St. Petersburg area, and you want to team up with me, feel free to reach out. Uh, I'm also in the process of putting together my CRM and I'm looking probably at the end of November to bring on two to three acquisition people and one dispo person. So if you want to work with me, whether it's work for my company or just work alongside of me and do some deals together, please reach out. Reach out to Jacob. He's the bomb. Jacob Simpson, we love you, bro. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place, same awesomeness. Later. Peace. Thanks for watching another one of my YouTube videos. Now it's your turn to go out and take some action. But before you do, like and subscribe to my channel because the law of reciprocity means you owe me.